this is my week 31 post-gastric bypass Roux and Y update. Um, I had surgery on the 3rd of May 2016 here in London in the UK. Uh, my surgeon was Dr Guy Slater and my surgery was through Streamline Surgical Group. So to start my stats, my high weight was 132 kilos or 291 pounds or 20 stone 11. Um, when I came to you last was my six month update and that was uh, at 91.7 uh, kilos I think. Um, this month not much has happened. <laughs> Um, I am at 90.7 kilos for week 31, which um, I I'm just seem to be circulating between 90.1 kilos, that's the lowest that I've seen, and 91.7 uh, kilos, so somewhere around there. I just keep recycling the same pounds over and over and over again, but um, that's okay. I'm alright. I've had some non-scale victories um, and some scale victories in that time, so it's all good. So 90.7 kilos uh, is 199.9 pounds, so I'm very, very much ever so slightly into um, the Imperial Measurements uh, Wonderland, which is nice. Um, I know it's a big uh, celebration for a lot of people, um, pounds don't mean quite so much to me, but yeah. I know, it, I know it's a milestone, so that's all good. Um, 200 pounds is also the barrier um, between a BMI of 30-something and 29.9. Um, so I have just broken that barrier as well, which means that I am now overweight rather than obese. So um, to, um, to quote Brit Brat, uh, the SG Brit Brat, um, who has also just crossed this barrier. I have beaten obesity, one might say, um, which is also very bizarre. Um, I'm still in that sort of weird stage of um, not recognising myself. I talked about it a little bit in my last video, um, and it's definitely psychologically, I think, part of the reason that I'm sort of stuck at this point is... Um, I think there's potentially a bit of self-sabotage going in there because, yeah, because I don't recognise this person that I'm becoming and therefore it's a little bit anxiety inducing and it, um, yeah, it's a little bit scary to, to not, not know yourself or not recognise yourself when you look in the mirror and, um, you know, other people's reactions to that and, I don't know, it's just it's just a very weird sort of process. Um, whereas the person that I do recognise, the girl, you know, eating crap food or, you know, eating junk or eating too much, you know, that's someone I very much recognise and there's comfort in that. And, um, you know, part of this process is recognising, you know, what is, what behaviours are about, you know, seeking comfort as opposed to being hungry and you know, just trying to, trying to be kind to yourself and changing those. So that's pretty much, um, what I'm focusing on at the moment. You know, I've gone down another size, which is brilliant, uh, non-scale victory wise. Um, so I'm now wearing a size 14 on the top and a size 14 or 16 on the bottom. Well, one pair of size 14, let's face it, let's not get carried away. Um, <laughs> and they're a very stretchy pair of jeggings from Dorothy Perkins, um, if you are in the UK or you do have access to Dorothy Perkins, their Frankie style of uh, jeggings are super comfortable, super stretchy, um, and yay for yay for it being a size 14. It's a UK 14, which I think is a US 10, um, I think off the top of my head. Um, you know, so all of that's really good, and you know, like this T-shirt that I'm wearing here was a size 20. Um, and I actually wore it in one of my early videos. I'll try and insert a, a little snippet here. Hopefully that worked. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I still wear it because it's the most comfortable t-shirt ever. It's that super soft, super stretchy um, jersey. But, you know, it, it, it's still bizarre to me that this is now really really big when it wasn't before and 
you know, like getting items of clothing out of the wash and, you know, holding them up and just going, oh my god, there's just no way that'll fit. Um, I went shopping in um, so the shopping mall week before last, I think, and it's the first time I've really been purposefully shopping in a mall uh, since surgery. You know, I've ordered stuff online or I've ordered specific things um, that I need for work or, you know, that sort of thing as I've gone down sizes, but I haven't really been to a shopping mall and tried lots of things on. I went there and it was quite a bizarre experience. So, uh, you know, shopping and being able to walk into just about any of the stores and fit into the clothes is just an absolute mind warp. I think, you know, for me, I'm, you know, I've, I've talked before about how I'm vegetarian, um, and so when I go to a restaurant, I'm used to just going, okay, that's cool, I've got four or five dishes to choose from on an average menu, which is, which is loads more than it used to be. Most restaurants used to only do one dish. But, you know, so it's like, okay, choice, you know, choose something out. And then when you go to a restaurant that is solely vegetarian, you know, that, that's what they do is vegetarian food, and you've got the whole menu to choose from, it's completely overwhelming. And I feel like clothes shopping was a bit like that, like all of a sudden there was so many more choices to be made. You know, I went into Zara, which is a shop which is uh, traditionally tiny sizing, <laughs> you know, like even their extra large is small. Um, and, you know, for the first time I fit into something from Zara and even when I lived in Canada when I was like 22, 23, I don't think I fit into Zara clothes or I might have fit into the t-shirts but nothing else really. Um, and, and that was, you know, when I felt a lot smaller. Um, but I fit into a extra large pencil skirt there. it still showed like the bulges and things like that and panty lines and all that sort of thing I can't be bothered basically um but just to fit into it was yeah just totally weird <laughs> um so I didn't end up buying very much I bought a blazer um for work because my blazers are all too big and I bought a pair of jeans and these great uh boat neck jersey tops from Primark which are like £3.50 each and I'm pretty much living in those at the moment. I bought those in a size 14. Um, I'll try and insert another picture in here if I can get my photos because uh, yesterday I dropped my phone in the toilet, my iPhone 6, so that's not currently working so I don't know how many of the photos have actually backed up but if I can find one I will insert it in this video. iPhone is now sitting in a bag of rice. Uh, fingers crossed that will dry it out. Um, and I'm recording this on my old iPhone 5. Um, but the good news is I'd actually just ordered an upgrade to the 7 Plus. So that should be arriving in a couple of weeks. So fingers crossed. <laughs> um, that should be good. Um, so, like I said, not much happening on the scale. These things are what they are. So I am trying to stay positive. I know in my last video I talked a lot about how I was struggling and I still am, you know, sort of struggling mentally. Um, but I'm trying my best to, I don't know, to not, not to stay positive because I think that's sort of part of my problem is I always try and stay positive instead of just letting, you know, letting the negative feelings actually just process and pass through and then move on from them. Um, I guess I'm just trying to be quite zen about it and, you know, feel the way I feel and, and express what I'm feeling and sort of knowing that that's okay. So <laughs> uh, that took a deeper turn. Uh, ignore that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about... Um, because nothing else is happening on the scale, is a couple of my favourite recipe books and sort of how I'm eating at the moment. So, um, December, I decided, um, you know, after November was hit and miss when it came to junk food and, and what have you, that December I'm going to focus really on 
how I want to eat long term. So I have cut out um, most of the protein drinks that I was having, or protein, you know, protein shakes and uh, the protein powder that I was putting in my coffee in the morning. I have swapped that over to just a sort of a less intense version of bulletproof coffee in the morning. So I put um, I have Nespresso coffee with um, some cocoa powder, that's unsweetened cocoa powder, a little bit of cayenne pepper, um, some sugar-free syrup, so I either put it in like gingerbread or whatever I've got on hand, uh, and then I put in two teaspoons of coconut oil and one teaspoon of butter and a dash of almond milk um, and boiling water, and I just blend that up with a hand blender and I have that in the morning. And that usually keeps me sort of full till 11, say, uh, and then I'm having a skier yogurt with a couple of tablespoons of granola um, and a pear sliced up. I'm really into pears at the moment. Um, and then lunch, I tend to have uh, beetroot. I, I've got such a thing for beetroot since weight loss surgery. I don't know what it is, but I love it. Um, I get like these little packs of the cocktail beetroot um, that's sort of sweet and sour and it's delicious. Um, so I have that with a salad and some goat's cheese or some goat's cheese and some pecans and that sort of thing. Um, snacks, I'm just trying to really add fruit in as much as possible. So the little satsumas or clementines, the easy peeler ones, are uh, in season at the moment. So I generally have a bag of those on my desk and a bag at home so that I can snack on those. Um, and it feels quite good to have something that I'm not limiting or restricting myself on. There's a, it's sort of a mental thing around going, you know, if I'm hungry, I can have as many of them as I want. Um, and at 20 calories a piece, it's really not going to do too much harm. So I usually have between two and four of those a day um, and quite often a little cheese stick as a snack. Um, and then dinner is uh, generally vegetables with cheese of some kind. That tends to be my sort of go-to, whether it's like sweet potato and goat's cheese or Brussels sprouts and cheddar or um, mushrooms um, with some gruyere or something like that. It tends to be my go-to, um, often on salad. Um, one of the things that I have noticed is that my protein levels overall have really dropped. I am getting about 25 to 35 grams a day. Ideally I'd like that to be up around 40 grams, um, which I think as a vegetarian and without supplementing with any sort of protein supplements um, is probably as good as it's going to get while still, you know, keeping my calories in check. Um, but the reality is that I feel you know, I feel better for that, for that, and, you know, having slightly more carbs and slightly less protein seems to work for me, and I don't know whether that's because I grew up as a vegetarian, and that's just what my body's used to, but I've found energy-wise and mood-wise that it's definitely, um, having that little bit of extra carbs in the morning with the granola on my yogurt, whereas before I was just having pure yogurt and chia seeds, um, between that and, and the increased veggies and fruit, I do feel better um, and it means that I'm also limiting the amount of sort of processed and artificially sweetened things I'm having. I still have the um, sugar-free syrup in my coffee in the morning, I can't quite give that up but that's the only thing that I have generally that is sugar-free. Um, if I get a sweet craving I tend to grab a mid of date um, that tends to knock it on the head so that, that's sort of the plan, that's the goal, that's what I'm moving towards and I think ultimately that's how I'd like to be eating in the long term. I know um, C. Jane Shrink and VSG Jody are both doing Pound of Cure. Um, I know Jane has been doing it for a re really long time, I think since surgery, so you know, I think that's probably the direction I'm looking at going in and it's pretty much supported by um, a lot of the recipes that I really enjoyed. So I figured I would share some of the recipe books that I am currently loving um, and let you know what I sort of think about them and why I think they're helpful. So first one I've got isn't a recipe book exactly, but it is by Rose Elliott, who if you have been vegetarian for 
any significant length of time you've probably come across Rose Elliott. She does a lot of vegetarian cookbooks, um, generally very tasty, very simple recipes. Uh, she came out with this book which is The Vegetarian Low Carb Diet. Um, I actually got this about two years ago when I decided to try doing a sort of more keto style diet. Uh, which is traditionally quite difficult as a vegetarian. Um, her recipes tend to be lower carb. Um, she, you know, she does things like cauliflower cheese, um, tofu sort of recipes, um, scrambled tofu, lots of quiches, that sort of thing. Um, but there are some quite good low carb recipes if low carb is your thing. She also has a two week menu plan in there, which um, I found quite useful when I was, you know, hitting a bit of a mental block and was saying, oh, I don't know what to have. Um, I find that, yeah, it's a good place to go to for ideas, basically. But, as I just said, you know, I am not so worried about limiting the carbs right now, so um, I'm dipping into this less. Another one which is good if you are more on the vegan side or if you just want to cut out a bit of meat is this one which is Appetite for Reduction. It's by Issa Chandra Muskwitz. I'm probably pronouncing that super wrong. Um, this is an American cookbook. Uh, she is a very, very well-known vegan cook, um, probably one of the most famous vegan cooks. Um, and she does this one. She has another one called Veganomicon. Um, this one is lighter recipes. It's a very pretty book. You know, you look inside and it's very um, nicely laid out. Uh, lots of bean recipes, uh, lots of recipes that give you substitutes for using cheese. So she uses things like nutritional yeast and stuff. As uh, delightful as that sounds to people that aren't vegetarian, it is actually super tasty. Um, I don't use this one as much, but it's a good one to have on hand. Uh, Deliciously Ella, I've got to say this one is not my favourite, um, I think uh, she is quite well known as a blogger and uh, she does a plant based diet and you know she does a lot of things, natural sugars like you know using dates, using uh, palm sugar, um, things like that, things that have less of an impact on your blood sugar levels. Um, but ultimately I think I found her things when I sort of worked out the actual calories and the actual, um, what's the word I'm looking for, the actual uh, breakdown of protein, carbs, fat, calories, all of that sort of thing, I was less impressed to be honest. Um, and I didn't find her recipes quite as tasty as some of the other ones that I'll get to in a second. So I think some people really like her, so it's worth including, but I think save your money and you're better to get to the uh, copies of the Anna Jones cookbooks, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, this one I want to mention very briefly. Uh, this is the Moosewood cookbook, which um, is the cookbook that I grew up with. <laughs> uh, it was published, first published in, bear with me, 1977. Um, I grew up vegetarian, my whole family's vegetarian, my parents have been vegetarian since their early 20s um, and this was a go-to cookbook in our house growing up and so there's a lot of recipes in here that have a lot of comfort sort of memories for me um, but they're also quite easy to uh, make weight loss surgery for anyway to be honest. Um, there is quiches, there is tofu based things, there is lots of sorts of salads, um, there is my favourite recipe for solyanka which is like a potato cabbage and cottage cheese based dish um, which is delicious in here. It's also um, beautifully illustrated this book, I mean it's all the recipes are hand illustrated, it's all beautifully written. Um, which makes it quite unusual, but I uh, purposely went out of my way and got a copy second hand of uh, one of the original ones because they have done a newer one which um, they have updated, but I find the original one has the best recipes in it. That's that one there. Um, but then, saving the best for last, 
these two are my absolute go-to. So um, Anna Jones is a vegetarian cook. She sort of came out around the same time or came out under uh, sort of Jamie Oliver, that sort of style. She's, she's English based um, and she's got these two books. So one is A Modern Way to Eat and the other is A Modern Way to Cook. If I had to choose one, I would say go with A Modern Way to Eat. I prefer the recipes in this one, but they're both pretty brilliant. Um, and her style of cooking is really simple, just wholesome ingredients. Um, things like lemon roasted feta with traffic light tomatoes, uh, charred spring vegetables with watercress vinaigrette, um, celeriac soup with crispy hazelnuts and sage, um, lots of lentils, you know, herbed quinoa with goat's cheese. I mean, to me, that's the sort of food that I just love. It's so colourful, it looks healthy, it looks vibrant. Um, and ultimately, I think that's how I'd like to eat. Um, and to be honest, I've tried quite a few of her recipes now, and I haven't come across a dud yet. So, um, I think she's an absolute winner. Cool, so that's those ones. Um, the other ones that I like are ones that I've actually got out of the library, and that's the Ottolenghi cookbook. So Ottolenghi uh, has several uh, deli kind of restaurants in London. Uh, he also has some dinner restaurants called Nopi. Um, and so there's an Ottolenghi cookbook, there's a Nopi cookbook, um, and then there are three other ones that he's done. One called Jerusalem, which is all uh, f food from Jerusalem. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory, sorry. Um, and then he does one called Plenty, and then he did a sequel to that called Plenty More, which is lots of vegetable recipes. Um, and I'll try and insert some photos from the Ottolini restaurants here, because it's one of my favourite places in the world to eat. Um, it just has these big platters of these salads and these interesting flavour combinations. And again, very much like the Anna Jones books, it's very fresh, it's very natural ingredients. It's not heavy on grains, but it does include some carbs. And to be honest, I think that's that's the way to go. I think, you know, I, I don't want to cut out pasta and bread completely because I do really enjoy those. But I think having them once or twice a week is plenty. And the rest of the time, you know, getting those carbs from fruit, uh, fruits and roots, basically. Um, I can't remember who said that, but fruits and roots are the way to go. So sweet potato, uh, beetroot, um, and lots of fruit. Like I said, I'm having lots of pears and oranges um, at the moment, and that seems to be working well. Um, so yes, fingers crossed, things go better for me in December. Um, I, I mean, I am feeling positive. Um, looking forward to Christmas. Hopefully I'll get an update in before then. Um, but other than that, I hope everyone's doing well. And just before I forget, I can't believe this was sitting on my bed and I forgot to pull it out as well. Um, this is from today's Guardian newspaper. So if you are based in the UK um, and you feel like getting your hands on the Guardian, uh, Anna Jones, whose cookbooks I was just talking about, has a whole section on vegetarian Christmas recipes. So here's an example. Ooh of um, some of the stuff that she does and the recipes include charred clementine pickled squash and radicchio salad which looks pretty good um, oh my god it's got this pie I actually haven't looked at this yet <laughs> uh, yum miso roast squash and potatoes with almonds and kales golden crusted brussels and a gingerbread and cranberry tart so yum super cute lots of veggie recipes actually what is that pie oh, that is the right one oh it is a celeriac and sweet garlic pie yum so lots of um lots of good options here and if you want to try out some of her recipes risk free you can do that um otherwise i tend to find if you google chef's names on pinterest or anything like that often you will find um free recipes that they've released in various publications so um, that's always a good bet all right guys merry christmas if i don't talk to you before then 
See you later.